Welcome to the lesson on atomic models. At the end of the lesson, we will be able to understand the structure of an atom, list the findings of Thomson's model of an atom, explain Rutherford's model of an atom, understand Bohr's model of an atom. Have you ever come across some charged substance? Are you talking about the game which we play by rubbing scale on our hair and then attracting bits of paper from it? Yes, the attraction of paper is due to charged particles. Where does the charge come from? Atom is not simple. It contains many indivisible particles inside it. E. Goldstein discovered a new radiation in a gas discharge tube and named it canal rays. This was further investigated to be positively charged particles denoted as P and named proton. The mass of the proton was found to be 2000 times that of the electron. So, an atom is positively charged. No, we know that an atom is neutral. That means to balance a positive charge, there must be negative charge. This charge was represented as E. To understand the structure of an atom, many scientists proposed various atomic models. J. J. Thomson was the first to propose a model for the structure of an atom. According to Thomson's model, an atom can be considered as a watermelon. The red edible part was like a positive charge, whereas the seeds were like the electrons studded in the positively charged sphere. Thomson proposed that an atom consists of a positively charged sphere and the electrons are embedded in it. The negative and positive charges are equal in magnitude, so the atom is electrically neutral. Rutherford designed an experiment in which he bombarded fast-moving alpha particles into a thin gold foil. Alpha particle scattering experiment gave unexpected results. Most of the particles passed straight through the gold foil. This means that most of the space inside the atom is empty. Hence, these alpha particles pass away without any barrier. Some particles were defected slightly. This means that the positive charge of the atom occupies very little space. Few of the particles rebounded. The particles which were deflected by 180 degree indicated that all the positive charge and the mass of the gold atom were concentrated in a small volume within the atom. Rutherford put a nuclear model of an atom. There is positively charged center in an atom called the nucleus. All the mass of an atom resides in the nucleus. The electrons revolve around the nucleus in well-defined circular orbits. The size of the nucleus is very small as compared to the size of an atom. There was a major drawback in Rutherford's model. According to him, the electron revolves in a circular orbit. Anything which undergoes acceleration would radiate energy and should fall into the nucleus. In this case, the atom should be highly unstable and hence matter should not exist in the present form. But we know that atoms are quite stable. Electrons would fall into the nucleus if they rotate in a circular orbit. Atoms are unstable. Keeping the shortcomings of Rutherford's model in mind, Neil Bohr gave certain findings of the model of an atom. 
According to him, the electrons revolve around the nucleus in certain orbits called shells. Each shell or orbit has a different radius. When the electrons revolve, they do not radiate energy and hence the atom remains stable. Electrons revolve in certain orbits called shells. Electrons do not radiate energy. Within an orbit, the energy of an electron is constant. Orbits or shells are called energy levels. Their orbits are represented by the letters K, L, M, N or the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4 and so on depending on the number of shells in an atom. Visit ATEC Academy on www.atecedu.com or contact on 904